Hello and welcome back for another video. We have another mod I wanted to show you. This is, I call it S-Ship. What is S-Ship? Well, it is Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project. That is a mouthful. I'll just call it S-Ship. This is Stainless Steel. However, it is more of a focus on historical accuracy. I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and go through. I'm going to try to go to a couple factions for you. Show you what this mod is about. They've added a lot of stuff. If I sat here and told you everything that they've added, we'd be here for an hour. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to try to get in some of the stuff that I like that they've added. So we'll go ahead and go to single player. There's some enhancements. I am also using, it is called Freecam. You can get this on ModDB. I will add links to this mod as well as Freecam. And you can go, the Total War Center is where you can find this mod. I couldn't find it on ModDB, so, but I found it, I downloaded it. And Freecam enables, it's mostly good for battles. It, and especially with these enhancements, it makes this mod absolutely beautiful. And with this historical accuracy that is added, there's more immersion. There's also dynamic changes to the difficulty. I mean, there is so much stuff in this mod. Try to get in what I can. Let's go to, if I go to high or late, there's nothing here. And I think they are actually, they're still adding it, adding to it, getting new versions out. Uh, this one's been out since August. The mod's been out for a little, oh, you know, it's been out for a while. Some of you may be familiar with it, so, and some of you may not be. So. I just wanted to do this video because I really like this mod. Another is another thing that they've added. I can, which reminds me, is factions. I, I guess you could say faction evolution, which also includes each country trying to find its own crown. You have certain objectives that you have for that. There's also historical events that is added, and as well as army-related mechanisms. Focus on a general, so it adds so much stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and try France. We're going to go in. I'm going to see what this is like. We'll do a battle. Okay, now we have, it says version point 098. Meant to be a difficult mod. Little money, aggressive AI factions, high unrest in the settlements, problems with the loyalty of generals, bad reputation if expanded too quickly. I tend to have, sometimes I, I don't catch myself and I tend to do that. I try to expand quickly, especially in this game and many other special challenges for the player. At the higher campaign difficulties, there are new mechanics that may be difficult to understand and use efficiently without reading explanations. These new aspects of the mod and also some of the old game engine features will be explained in the information windows popping out like this one. This version of the S-Ship is quite fleshed out, but still may contain bungs, prop, yada, 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 yada. Yes, okay, let's go ahead. Campaign difficulty normal, so I think the difficulty is a little bit more dynamic with this. There's also, to me, it seems like the war dynamics as well. Like wars are not are fought a little differently than I guess vanilla. So so we got Suger, French Abbot, statesman and historian. So yes, uh, let's go through attacking with general script. Now this I, I would I would like to go ahead and accept because it, it's giving generals more of a role to play, which is also added in this mod to do that. And I think that's pretty much it. I think there's going to be more stuff throughout the turns. So let's go ahead and end the turn. I'm just wanting... And as you can see, I, I can tell the difference in the in the campaign map. Really, it's it seems like it's a little... We have a proposition better. for you. I think I trade. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And here you have the Rise of the Knights. Fight in Europe. Warriors of AD 1000. Enjoyed no hereditary status of old English knight servant, uh, but an important and growing role as horseman. So game strategy, the unit of knights are available to be recruited from the landowner's buildings. Consider the following issues and consequences. The building is available in both castles and cities, meaning that you'll have heavy units, even when you're short of castles. Establishing the building is quite fast as it reflects granting the land to the knights as the process and the process of their settling down, not building something physical. The refill of the recruitment pools of the knights units is very slow, but they are recruiting fast. One turn. Ooh, the one turn? Wow. This means you can keep units unrecruited until there is a pressing need. Ah, oh, now that is interesting to have. Be economical with the knights in battles, though, as the losses do count in many instances. You will have to wait long for th for the refill at the pools, and there might be another battle need for the heavy troops. 
Mind also that disbanding units or disbanding does not refill the pools, but it saves you money. So many times you'll disband, especially depleting units. Just now it changes a lot of things. So as you can see, we have spear militia. So I I want to show a, a battle here at some point. And all there. But let's do. I'm gonna do one more intern. And also each I guess each faction does have their own unique buildings. And I think there's some of the conditions to get your crown, I think, is also depending on your getting your buildings. So, oh, here we go, diplomacy guide. So now diplomacy is also changed. There are some fundamental rules dealing with the factions. Your reputation will determine how you are treated by others. It's the most important factor in your foreign policy. Uh, your reputation raises if you release prisoners, assist your allies in battle, take part in crusades and jihads, especially if conquering the targets, big, but build big cathedrals, mosques, big charity centers. Your reputation decreases if you exterminate or sack cities, execute prisoners, backstab an ally, start the war first, cancel treaties. If you are at war and relations fall very fall below very poor, your enemy will not want peace no matter what. This happens usually right after conquering a settlement or starting a war. By being chivalrous, releasing prisoners, staying in your territory, stay in your lane, I guess, the relations will normalize and peace will be possible. For Catholic factions, good relations with the Pope are essential so that you will be able to call crusades. So you could do this in vanilla, I remember, but I, I guess it's more of a dynamic. It, it adds a little bit more to it. Makes it more, I guess you could say, choices matter or something like that. Um, soldiers move, so, soldiers serve for money. Oh, if your treasury runs empty to sell swords, well, uh, the sell swords will abandon you. So I guess the mercenaries will just leave. I'm sure throughout the turns it's going to show some more stuff. Oh, here we go. The importance of financial reserves. The most important, I mean, I'm, I don't even know how much money I got. I got Okay, we got like 13k. The most important advice for the players of S-Ship is always keep a few thousand florins in your treasury as a reserve. Oh, that's interesting. Money may be needed. Okay, so before I go on, I know the shell, and you can also do the money cheat. That's also a thing. I, I usually do not do that a lot. Sometimes I do just to have some fun. I see to hire mercenaries instantly when you're unexpectedly and suddenly attacked by rebels or another faction. This can save you from losing an important city. You may be offered a marriage or have the opportunity to adopt a new general. Either will cost you a thousand florins. You may be offered a guild, normal level for two thousand or the master level for five thousand. Perhaps this is the number you should target? That's an interesting question. An interactive event may occur. Oh, that might cost you or something. Pirates may, be, may threaten to attack you unless you pay them 5,000. Some ancillaries can be acquired only if there is significant surplus in your treasury. So you can't go on and just try to, I guess, bully other countries or they will attack you. Outbreak of plague will close all trade routes to and from a settlement, crippling your income. Oh my God, that's crazy. So this adds a crap load more dynam dynamics than I thought. Wow, Where shall this, we would, strike? this would be a really good let's play to do. I'm gonna try to start as another faction and kind of see how different that is. All right, let's start us an another campaign here. Uh, I did France. Let's see, what kingdom of Denmark? That'd be cool. Let's start. Okay, so we got the same thing here. Uh, the campaign, choose your way. At the, at the beginning, Denmark is financially a weak faction. You may struggle to expand and even to survive. To assist the player, there is a script that adds some money, various amounts, until the faction is big enough. You may now accept this support or decline and heroically try to survive without gifts. Well, that is interesting to do with the weaker factions. Let's see, Denmark reforms are not fully implemented yet. The faction plays similar as it was in 9.2 or version 9.7, with one exception. Uh, in the first decades, you may be supported financially by your people, if you have chosen so. Okay. Attack the general script. Okay, now this is a little different. Oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Well, well, what we got here? Okay, I guess I gotta go take Riga. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, I have... 
Okay, Spheres of Influence. This is... Uh, taking settlements will usually make your rivals angry and negatively affect your reputation. However, there are certain provinces that are perceived to be yours by default. Uh, be aware that your conquests have political ramifications as well. To this end, it is wise to ally yourself with factions that do not share any claim to the same ancestral lands. Let's go. Let's go with this for a minute. Let's. I'm kind of interested. This has piqued my interest here, and I can't build any archers until I get a bower. So, in the turn. Looking in the trees. Okay, so we have the rise of knights again, and then new mission. Take what? Have to take this. We could get some mercenaries. Some hunters, why not? Is that gonna hurt me? Oh my god, yes. Your will shall be obeyed! Maybe we shouldn't have done my that. Lord. We're still gonna get it. This takes 19 turns. Wow. Construction, 19 turns. That is crazy. I will make so I guess it does you. I guess it's probably because I mean we're just kinda weak. I would, I would assume. Let's go ahead and relent, move ever. down and take this, I guess. We must. And we have a bride presented, of course. Uh, diplomacy, This we've seen this in the last one. A soldier served for money, we saw that one. Money from the nobles. My lord, your loyal nobles. Also, we get money. And rich elders, now they just collected funds. So this is the... This is what happens in, I guess, in those weak factions that you start as. So I want to quickly go into... Let's... let's check out some family tree stuff so I think what they have also added uh, it was a different thing you had to install but they've added it into the mod it's like the next air script and what this does um, I guess when you have secession if the people don't that was a good secession then they will create a civil war which also limits all that I want to show a battle that will actually features these and have like in the weather I don't want this random weather and I get something crappy so I guess I'll just go to a custom battle Oh no, France. Why not? Alright, I've pretty much given everybody some units here. I'm gonna play as, I guess, Holy Roman Empire. Let's go ahead and start this. Enhancements. Now I have free cam. You can't use the middle mouse button with free cam. Oh wait, it's not on. Now it is on. So you can't hit middle mouse button because that's a zoom. And you can hear the pop and the sound, so we won't be doing that. But we can actually, if you want to go, you can also go use R and F. I have my controls a little different. You had to just set it to what you want. It adds more flexibility and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. This really seems like it remasters medieval tube. I mean, look at this. This is just ridiculous. I think these effects, because what it does is add large address awareness, which pretty much forces the game to take some kind of steroid, like forces it to use four gigabytes of memory and and you can also use this with other mods. This in with Steam and Still, and wow, really cool. Now, as you can see, it's nice and smooth, and so that's what this enhancement also does, and just really makes everything better. So let's go ahead and get our units set up. Wow, this looks really cool. And I do have the graphics turned all the way up, but it really, uh, this little plug-in really, I can tell the difference. There's that calf. Nice. Let's get these guys off skirmish mode. Alright, here we go. Heavy infantry. We are being attacked. Hard work. Charge. We are being attacked. Charge. Heavy infantry. Heavy infantry. Yeah, looks really good. It's not, it's not vanilla medieval 2, I can tell you that.
Oh, see, I accidentally hit the middle mouse button. It's just by habit. Uh, where's that calf? Is that my calf? Nope, my calf's gone. Oh, we got it. So, it just looks so good. I'm very impressed with this mod. There's so much, so much things added. And with this free cam, you can just pretty much flow the camera wherever you want. It's really cool. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Because we've got a lot more videos coming. We're going to do some Empire 2, uh, the new, the latest version. I think I'm going to do Prussia. I'm not really sure. But yeah, subscribe. We've got more videos coming. You don't want to miss it. And... I think this is pretty much a good battle. Let's go ahead. I'm not doing a campaign, so let's just go ahead and get out of this. Well, that has been Steam and Steel Historical Improvement Project 0.98, or S-Ship. A really fun mod. I highly recommend it. Go ahead, download it, and install it. Mods for Medieval 2, um, installing them, has gotten has become way easier than it used to be 10, 11 years ago. I remember playing Stainless Steel back then, and... Uh, a lot more intricate to install them, but now it's just now it's become way easy, easier. If you need help on installing it, uh, let me know. If you need any help with free cam, let me know, and I'll uh, help as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Uh, remember to subscribe and share the video and like. Hit that like button. It helps the channel, and we will see you again next time.